Welcome back to the channel. Now in this video, we are fitting a 300 series steering wheel into my 79 series with fully functional steering wheel controls, cruise control, and also maintaining the factory airbag detonator. Uh, now this video is gonna take you through the entire process on how to properly wire in your steering wheel controls with pretty much any modern day Toyota steering wheel. Um, and as always, I've included all the links, all the parts in the description. So make sure you go and check it out. Let's get into the installation. So the first step is to remove this bus of a steering wheel. Uh, but most importantly, disconnect the battery. Next is to remove the horn pad and it's held in by two screws, one on each side of the steering wheel. And to get to those two screws, we have to remove a cover on each side. Just with a plastic trim removal tool, we can gently pry the trim off. Now with the trim off, you can see that there is a torque screw in there and I'm gonna be using a T27 bit. Take the horn pad off. And next we are going to disconnect two connectors. So that orange connector is for the airbag detonator and also that brown wire into a spade terminal. We're gonna disconnect that, that is for the horn. So with this orange connector, we need to unlock it by prying up on the yellow tab. So just with a small flathead. And then all we have to do is to pull it off. And with the horn spade terminal, there is a little bit of a locking tab just right there. All you have to do is squeeze. Squeeze on that. And that's it. Set the airbag aside. The next step is to remove the steering wheel. And firstly, we need to disconnect that white four pin connector. Uh, now there are three wires going to that and that is responsible for your horn and also your cruise control. So time to undo that nut. It is a 90 mil nut. Now, when you're loosening the wheel, it's a good idea to leave that nut on there because if uh, this is your first time removing the wheel, it's gonna be pretty stuck on there. The splines in the steering wheel will have locked itself onto the shaft. So if you're pulling really hard and you don't have the nut on there, it's just gonna end up in your face. But in my case, this is my second time reinstalling this new wheel. So it comes off pretty easy. Just like that. So next we're gonna be removing this clock spring and I'll explain it all in the next step. We're gonna to need to remove this trim. So just two Phillips head screws. Just gently push in and then down. So we're gonna disconnect everything off the clock spring. So we've got the black connector, the yellow, and also that white one in there. With this yellow connector, you pry the tab in towards you. And the white connector is just a normal one with the tab. Okay, so clock spring is ready to come out and it is held in by three tabs. One on the left side here, one on the right side here, and one on the top underneath this top trim. So just push the trim up, but there is a tab there to lift up. Click, and on the side here, and on the other side, that's the clock spring. So we are gonna be upgrading the clock spring. Now there's a certain business telling people that this is an illegal upgrade, but that same business is also the one with a 79 series with 40 inch tires. So I'll let you think about that one. This is the factory 79 series clock spring. Uh, and this is the N70 clock spring. Uh, this one's from a 2012 uh, to 15 model with the VSC. So this one was just off eBay for $19.99. Super cheap, but I've actually had this in the car for uh, almost two months uh, without any issue at all. At the end of the day, it's just a clock spring. It's a piece of plastic with a bunch of wires inside. But the reason why we're upgrading to this is because it has a connector housing there, a 10 pin connector housing. And that's the only way we can properly wire in our steering wheel controls. Now the dimensions are absolutely identical. The tab mounting locations are the same it bolts right in and the only difference is that this one has additional wires uh, for steering wheel controls in the Toyota Hilux. Uh, all we have to do is to change over this little sensor box here and that just comes off and bolts straight into the new clock spring. All right, so we're gonna be removing this entire piece 
Uh, now there are a bunch of tabs holding it around. I'm just going to go around and pry them off. Just gently, you don't want to break it. As you're prying the tab open, just gently pull it up from the sides. There we go. And that's a new piece which is going onto our aftermarket clock spring. Slot it straight over, push down, and that's your clock spring ready to go. So just pop that in. All you have to do is push down, and that's it. That's the upgrade. So of those three connectors we took off the old clock spring, we're going to be reconnecting at the moment just two of those connectors. All right, so this is where it gets a little bit intimidating for some. Uh, now, the way we wire in our steering wheel controls, from the steering wheel, there is a harness which plugs into that connector, uh, that 10 pin connector we spoke about earlier. Through that connector, there are a bunch of wires inside the clock spring and it terminates out the side to that 12 pin connector. Now, on the factory harness, there is this 12 pin connector already. And I actually did find that you could buy those pins separately from Toyota. Uh, I will put the part number in the video, but those pins are in Japan at the moment and they cost $32 per pin. So that's gonna be really expensive for just a bunch of uh, little metal contacts. So I had to think about it and this connector looked suspiciously familiar. And it reminded me of the Haltech wiring I did in my RX-7. So I jumped onto the Haltech website and I found that this connector was pretty much the identical one. So this is what you get from Haltech. You get this connector and also 12 pins, which I've already used side by side. They are pretty much identical and it plugs right into our clock spring. Anyways, it's starting to get dark. So let's go inside and do the wiring. So hopefully you guys are following on so far, but I am sorry if it's a bit confusing. It should start to make a bit more sense once you see the parts going back on the car. Uh, but until someone makes a plug and play harness, it's gonna be a bit fiddly. Um, so I'm gonna show you guys what you get out of the box. So in the box, uh, this is what you get. You get the steering wheel, which comes with a horn pad and also that rear trim panel. Um, and yeah, this is the piano black model, uh, the GR Sport piano black model. I know you can also get them in the fake carbon fiber. Um, and also the wood grain, but I thought this finish would match my interior a bit better. I'm going for that black and gray theme. Um, so with that wheel, it also comes with the harness. Now this harness goes between the steering wheel controls uh, to that upgraded clock spring that we installed. Um, and when I bought this wheel, when I was about to buy this wheel, I really wasn't sure whether or not I would be able to get the steering wheel controls to, to work. This, was, uh, this kit was designed for the LC200. Uh, so I reached out to the seller and I said, look, can you please send me an additional harness? So yes, he did send that extra harness. Um, and he also sent me uh, at my request. This one is a 2016 to 21 cruiser harness with steering wheel controls. Um, and all I wanted really was this connector. So they both work. Uh, don't be afraid to ask for either of them because they both work with that black connector. So all I want is this connector housing to plug into that black plug, which came out of the stock clock spring, and then three wires running to my new Haltech connector uh, to go into my upgraded clock spring. All I'm doing now is deep pinning all the extra wires that you don't need or just simply cut them off. Okay, so I made this quick wiring diagram for you guys. I will put it up on the screen. Uh, now this is the 12 pin Haltech Tyco connector that I showed you guys earlier. And we are looking at it from the back side of that connector with the release tab on the top side. Uh, so the release tab on the top here, and I've numbered them 12 to one. Now you might be able to see this on camera, but there is a number 12 there and a number seven here for your orientation. So 12, pin 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So pin one, two, and eight are coming from that pigtail we just de-pinned. So these three wires are gonna be going into my new Haltech Tyco connector and the existing wires we're gonna to have to make from scratch, which will run to the head unit. So these are the pins you get with the Tyco connector. Um, and these are pretty easy to crimp. You just need a special tool. Otherwise you can probably get away with a standard pair of crimpers like these. That's it. With the right tools, it's literally that easy. So 
So we need to insert these three pins onto this side of our Tyco connector. Now to do that, we need to unlock the connector first. You'll see two black tabs on the side of them. You wanna pry them up this way and you'll see this tab come up. So just on both sides. Like that. And you'll see that this part of it is raised. Be mindful that all these pins are now unlocked and we need to be careful how hard we pull on these wires. So I've got three pins I'm gonna insert according to this diagram. So that's it. Bit of a piggyback harness to the factory connector. And what you're gonna need to do now is push that black tab down so it locks all the pins in place. This morning we're going to complete our steering wheel install. So yesterday you would have seen that we removed the stock steering wheel. We then upgraded the clock spring and then we went and made a steering wheel control harness. So what's left to do is to move the factory detonator from this horn pad over to the new horn pad. So let's take off this horn pad and to do that you're going to need to remove this backing plate since the wheel is not on the car yet. So by looking at the steering wheel from the back you can see where the horn pad is locked into. So you got one tab there, one tab there, and one tab there. So you can imagine if the wheel is on the car with the backing plate on, you have to reach in through the side, the side holes uh, to unlock those clips. But since it's off the car, it's gonna be a lot easier. Push to unlock. And the last one at the base of the wheel. It. Okay, so the back of the horn pad, we just need to move this detonator over to the new detonator. So it's just an 8mm nut. Transfer that over in the same orientation straight to the new horn pad. Okay, so just back into the car with our steering wheel control harness and I've added these four extra spade terminals just to make it a bit easier to plug in behind the, the head unit. I'm going to grab that connector from my harness. I'm going to plug it into the upgraded clock spring and this connector housing will go into the stock black connector just like that. So yeah I haven't touched any of the factory wiring now this harness will just go straight to my head unit. So with the head unit removed I've run the wiring harness up behind the dash and out behind the head unit. So just those four wires as a reminder Two of these are for key, one's for ground and one's for illumination. And I'm going to get all those from my head unit. Now my head unit has both the key one and the key two wires and I'm going to get the ground and illumination from uh, the patch lead for my head unit. So everything's going to be really uh, plug and play. I don't have to touch any of the stock wiring. Now if you don't have an Android unit, you might have something like a Sony, a Pioneer, Alpine, all those name brands. Um, you will need something additional to the steering wheel control harness. So the harness I made, it's going to be the exact same. You still have those three key wires and the illumination, um, but you will need to run it through something like this. Now this, uh, I will put all these part numbers in the description, uh, but it's not as complicated as you're thinking. You don't actually need to use the whole harness. You just need to run the three wires, the key one, key two, key ground through this decoder um, and the illumination just goes wherever you can find 12 volt illumination. I will include a bit more information in the description. Um, it really should get you in the right direction. So what I'm going to do now is just add a few male spade terminals uh, to the Android unit harness um, and then I will plug everything in. Okay so I've crimped on these two extra wires so I've got ground and the illumination and I'm going to plug this harness back in. Key one and key two. Cool. So they're my four inputs and the radio can go back in. All right, so I've refitted the head unit and I've also refitted the lower column trim. And now it's time to fit our new steering wheel. All right, so just pulling the clock spring pin and our steering wheel go straight on. Just making sure it's nice and center. It's looking good. The final part of the install now, we're just gonna start plugging everything back in. So the harness, which is supplied with the kit, uh, it's a 10 pin connector just to push it in there, click, and then plug in the steering wheel controls.
and this white connector for the cruise control. So with the horn pad, just the reverse of the removal, push the orange connector into the detonator and then the yellow clip down, and then the white wire is the horn. So just align the three feet, you'll hear three clicks. It looks so good. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I think it really, uh, it looks okay. It doesn't look too out of place. I am still going for this black and gray theme in this interior. Uh, and combined with the functionality you get from the steering wheel controls and the Android unit, um, I think it's gonna go along really nicely. I wanted to show you guys how to program um, all the keys that are programmable. So I'm just gonna open up the app. So just go to control. And the way this works is you just hold down a key and then you can select the icon, the corresponding function you want. So for example, now I am trying to do this one-handed. I'm gonna press down on the volume down key. And then I'm gonna go here and press that. And that's programmed in. Uh, volume up, select that, and that's it, you get the point. So I'm gonna program the rest of the keys, and I thought I'd show you guys so you know what you can do with this wheel. Uh, I got the voice control uh, logo there, so I'm just gonna put that on voice control. Got mode, I'm gonna put that on maps. The left and right icons, uh, I am gonna do previous song, next song, uh, and I've got also the call button, which I will pick up a call. Um, so yeah, uh, everything's programmed, everything works. And I wanna show you guys the illumination as well. Um, it definitely does work. So uh, let me just turn it off. There we go, that's off and that's on. Everything is working about this tool. Uh, and it is a really nice, uh, pretty much a plug and play option for most people. If you wanna get fancy like me, you can go make a wiring harness but otherwise um, you can actually make this work quite easily. I wanted to show you guys something pretty cool. Uh, now with all the buttons programmed, I'm finding the voice recognition working really well with the Android head unit, which is a Google platform. Uh, and I'll give you guys a quick demo. What is the weather in Sydney tomorrow? Tomorrow's forecast for Sydney is 23 degrees and partly yeah, cloudy. Yeah, you can do a lot of the simple functions. Uh, you can ask it to set alarms, set reminders, uh, put something on a calendar. Uh, also can do pretty cool stuff like, what was the Lakers Grizzlies score yesterday? The Lakers won 117 to 111 yesterday against the Grizzlies in overtime. Yeah, go the Lakers. I know I'm also gonna get a question about the cruise control. Uh, now, in a previous video, I did this installation on an N80 Hilux, and once again, the cruise control buttons, uh, they are mapped a little bit differently. Just to be clear, all the cruise control functions, they do work, uh, but the three buttons, the cruise up and down, and the cancel buttons, uh, they're a little bit mixed up. Now, I'm actually used to that already, um, but one day I will repin the wires and I will let you guys know how to do that in a later video. So that's it for this installation video. I hope you guys find this helpful. Uh, helpful not just for this steering wheel, but for any other modern day Toyota steering wheel. Um, if you like any of the content, make sure you subscribe. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I'll get back to you. And I will see you guys in the next video.